Hey everybody, welcome back. This is the Craft Beer Playbook, episode two. And on today's show, we're gonna head to Four Stacks Brewery over here in Apollo Beach. Uh, Brian decided to get the big cans, so we're excited. <laughs> we're, to, thanks, by the way. We're drinking heavy today on this Thursday. This is what the problem is. Like Typically, I either pick up the beer or we meet to get the beer. I gave Brian a task this week of picking it up since he lives in Apollo Beach and we wanted oh, to yeah. do four stacks. And he texts me and goes, yeah, it's going to be expensive and we got a lot of beer, uh, which normally I don't mind, by the way. But this is uh, this is only one episode. Like We can only drink so much beer Look, in one episode. We want to support our breweries. <laughs> So we drink a lot of beer and that's that's as easy as it gets. And we'll tell you more about Four Stacks story and what they're dealing with right now. Many breweries around Tampa Bay and the country are also fighting uh, to stay open. They're one of them. So we'll chat about that. We're also going to talk to you about the NHL season. We got, Woo! Yeah, Lawrence, baby! We got our lightning gear on. They have begun their Stanley Cup defense. So we'll get into their year without Kucherov and just what we expect from the Bolts mm in 2021 it's always tough without coach you know? is it, it's 2021 is it 2021 or 2021 mm, i've been heard anybody say 2021 nah it's 2021 definitely 221 yeah no what <laughs> all right 2021 keep it easy i hate math no that's more 2020 that's all that matters we haven't even been drinking yet just for what it's worth i know that price you have it well hey, hey. <laughs> um but so we're going to talk about that a little bit today as we you know talk hockey at, again the season starting also football continues and uh, I'm going to give you more credit later on, but you crushed it last week. You nailed all of your picks, Thank you, sir. Thank um, you. And we'll, we'll get more into that as the divisional game start four games this weekend instead of six. The one seeds are in both the chiefs and the Packers. And if you hear a dog barking in the background, we mentioned in our intro episode, nothing goes better with breweries and beer and sports than animals, dogs and cats. So that is Manny, right? Yeah, that's Manny. Manny's our neighbor. So an audience of he's, one today on the episode. <laughs> he's just joining in. I think he's thirsty. He probably wants a little uh, bit. Hopefully his bark is worse than his bite. And hopefully this beer is as good as his bark. So we'll get into all of this. Again, Four Stacks Brewery, the cool story about them and, and Brian, this one near and dear to your heart. It's very local. I think, believe the closest location uh, brewery wise for anything to you where your house is at. Yeah. So here in Apollo Beach, you know, there's not a ton of breweries. It's not a centralized hub like Tampa where you get all these, you know, ones popping up. And and actually the location of it too is is kind of unique. It's, you know, right by a housing complex and it's in a small little plaza there with a couple, you know, stores, a um, couple businesses. But I kind of stumbled across it. I had a friend that introduced me to it and uh, went in there a few years ago. And it, like I said, it's in a place where you don't even really realize there's a brewery there. So you go in and you, mm -hmm. you know, you're not really sure what to expect, but they've done such a great job there. They always have, you know, great food trucks out there. Their beer is phenomenal. They, they try a lot of different things, which I'm excited about this right here. The Demogorgon, this is a, a smoked cherry porter. This is one of their, uh, you said Demi Demogorgon. That's uh, how you pronounce it. No, that? that's stranger things. Oh, okay. That's. I I'm not a Stranger Things. I kinda. knew it. So you sent me a picture of the bottle and I was like, oh, Stranger Things. You had no reaction. So I was like, all right, I guess we're just going to keep rolling. I mean, I had a reaction. It's just to the beer, not necessarily the name. So, I mean, it, you can enlighten me on that. Well, so a popular thing in the Stranger Things show on Netflix is the upside down world. And I would imagine if you drink a full bottle of this, you mm. find yourself... Yep. upside down so is that where we're starting or are we start with one of these other uh I, let's start with it's up to you i'll let you pick so let's uh let's whatever this let's one talk is. About i don't even know which one this is all right, we'll i like this one. mystery opening today so right. this is uh four Saxes chocolate coffee porter which on the last episode we didn't get Giddy to up. any of those so this is going to be a new style for us here on the pod so so I'll let you pour that up and as we're kind of getting ready to roll here again reminder follow us at the craft beer playbook on both Facebook and Instagram at Beer Playbook on Twitter, and we're very active on those accounts. We do have a giveaway we're still doing, uh, the Tom Brady Collectors Football alongside a Total Wine gift card and a swag bag of local brewery swag goodies. Swag bag. You can still enter. All you have to do is go to any of those social platforms, find the picture of the giveaway, and make sure you're following us to have your chance to win. Otherwise, you're not eligible. But if you are following us and you do find one of those posts, you just comment tag three friends. You can tag one friend or two, maximize your chances by tagging three friends. And you can do that on any of the posts on any of the platforms to get more entries. So again, the Tom Brady collectors football alongside a total one gift card. And of course the bag of swag from local craft brewery. So all that continues to run the contest through the NFL playoffs. We'll talk more football coming up in a little bit, but we start in hockey, Brian, and we start talking lightning oh, yeah. hockey where they are the defending Stanley cup champions. And the big news is obviously, you know, them coming back to return to defend the cup, but without Nikita Kucherov, who has 
been a guy that me and you disagree about a lot, a lot. <laughs> That's putting it lightly. But nonetheless, you can't say that that doesn't hurt their on the ice ability to win games when he's not able to play and he'll be out for the entirety of the regular season. We were both very critical, Brian, of Steven Stamkos last year because he was such a mystery in the playoffs. Like there were rumors that he had come back to Tampa, that he was practicing with the team but not playing. And, you know, look, just like every other Lightning fan or Tampa Bay hockey fan, we wanted to see them win the cup. And yeah. obviously Stammer being on the ice, especially for what he does for the power play, they missed him. Now they were still winning games and series without him, but it sucked not having him out there. And although we were critical, you know, I think again, hindsight being 2020, he had a lot of reasons for not being out there. The fact that he even was on the ice for a shift and was able to score, you mentioned it storybook esque. Yeah. And he's kind of been that, uh, on a milk cart, missing on a milk <laughs> cart. And, you know, for the, seems like for the past few years, yeah. you know, for whatever reason, and as much as we both love Stammer, it's just been frustrating because it feels like when they need him the most, he's never been available. And he's had obviously a lot of bad luck with injuries and things that have been lingering. And that's, we, we diving in. Oh, no, you, you keep going. I just Let's want to go. Taste Let's it. go. Come on. Oh, all right. So, all right. I'm just, so no, the, you, you don't have to stop. The chocolate coffee. Well, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to let you drink without me. You know, we don't have to take sips at the same time. It's mm, team chocolate effort. Chocolate coffee here. porter. Here's the thing. So, like, we're recording this as we usually do earlier in the day. It's still, there's still sun out. I know that there's no caffeine in these coffee porter stouts, anything like that. I love coffee, though, and I love the taste of coffee. And so if I can get a beer like this early in the day, although it doesn't have caffeine in it, <laughs> mentally you're yeah. kind of like, oh, okay, a little pick-me-up, a little dark roast. Yeah, it's it's kind of that uh, – for me, I usually kind of end my night on, like, stouts and porters just because even though coffee is usually something you drink, like, early, like you said, but – I don't know. To me, it just I like drinking the darker stuff as almost like my dessert beer. Like if I go into a brewery and I'm gonna try a different couple, a couple different types. Mm -hmm. I'm usually going like IPA first, something a little bit lighter, a little bit hoppier, and then I work my way into like a stout or or porter. I just feel like it's that dessert taste. You know, it's good to kind of end your night on that. I love it. Um, okay, so this is really good. I'm a big fan. Um, I, and I this is pretty light too. I mean, six point two. Obviously, porters can can be a lot stronger than that. So if you're looking for something. Some of these definitely are strong coffee taste, like big time a lot of coffee notes. Um, chocolate, I think you can taste it not quite as heavy because, again, as you get higher in the alcohol percentage, you get more of that thicker, yeah, you know, kind of heavier taste. This one feels pretty light for, for a porter. A lot of good taste, though. And I think when we talk about any beer, we talk about the uniqueness of all the beers. Sometimes you want exactly, though, like what you're reading. And if you saw a coffee chocolate porter, <laughs> like this is what I would imagine it would taste like. Yep. And sometimes just to hit the mark, you don't have to be like crazy. Like also, do you get that hit of blueberries? Like yeah. sometimes you just want what you're reading and you want it to be something, you know, straightforward. And I feel like this beer is so very tasty. And it's simple. Um, like you said, you know, it doesn't have to be overly complicated. It's a nice, simple porter. It's light, you know, so it's not something that's going to weigh you down a ton. Yeah. You know, from four stacks not gonna hit it quite as heavy as some of these other uh, we've got a belgian strong we're gonna get no, it's to getting, those are gonna hit us heavy as yeah. we continue on here so the lightning again returning without kucherov we talk about stammer his emergence There's a lot of other good players vasi still in that headman uh the returning you know mvp of the, the cup finals um and you have sergachev in the like Braden point you have all these guys the lightning are still gonna make the playoffs like we're without kucherov being available mm -hmm. and potentially could get kucherov back for the playoffs i think Obviously, in any sport, it's super hard to repeat. But if you were to go through and look at like every team that wins a championship in any of these major sports, uh, even you know baseball, basketball, football, whatever, I think that the Lightning have just as good of an opportunity to repeat as any team that's won a title in the last thirty years. To be honest, yeah, they don't have a lot of new faces. I mean, yeah. that's the thing is like obviously missing Cooch, especially in the regular season, is going to be a huge loss because. That level of offensive production, you know, it's hard to replace that. They do get Stammer back this year. It's kind of like swapping them out. So, like I said, I, I'm curious to see if the, the offensive production is going to be similar to what it was last year, you know, kind of swapping those guys out. Um, but, yeah, they have as good a chance as anyone. You know, looking at the odds, they're, they have the second best favorite. Uh, they're the second mm -hmm. favorite to, uh, to repeat or to win the Stanley Cup, which will be a repeat for them, obviously, behind the Avalanche. We we'll yeah. obviously have a young team, a lot of offensive Bounced firepower. Bounced early stuff. in the playoffs last year on the Western side of things, mm -hmm. but the divisions are different too this year. Yep. And you look at you know different teams and their opportunities to make the playoffs and then make the conference finals. The Lightning have an easy you know 
uh, path compared to like, let's say the Flyers or the Capitals or the Penguins who all have to clash with each other in the Rangers and the Islanders. That's a very tough division. Uh, the Canadian division, in my opinion, is pretty weak in their one less team, but that's part of the travel restrictions. Yeah. Toronto, the favorite on that side of things. But in the West, you mentioned the Avalanche. They still have Vegas coming back, who yeah. you know is another really strong team. And then you know the Stars who beat both of them last year, actually in the Lightning's division, in the Lightning beat them in the cup finals. So they're going to be a strong team for the Bolts to take on. Carolina will be a strong team. Bruins, Bruins are always going to be there. It seems like just every year they're just up there. They could play the consistent. Bruins in the Stanley Cup final this year. How weird is That's that? That's pretty wild, which I'd pay I, I, this. Love, I'd pay double. I love playing the Bruins. I'll pay double. You know, I'll pay double. Wicked hard to, to beat them sometimes. <laughs> this guy. Uh, so let's talk about Amelie Arena a little bit. And the Lightning obviously do a great job. I'm ready to try another one too. I don't know. Let's I, dive in. I picked the last one, so I'll let you pick this one. But at Amelie, we've talked about in our intro video how cool it is and how on board they are with craft beer. They had a world of beer put into Amelie like a decade ago, so they were really on top of that. I know Big Storm Brewing did a Lightning uh, beer for their 25th anniversary a couple seasons ago. Um, so they're very on top of being very open to the craft beer drinkers. And you know, one of the things I love about craft beer, and we talk about this a lot as well, is the community. Well, the Lightning do a great job at bringing the community together. And one of the cool things about hockey games is whether you're nosebleed or up against the glass, somewhere in between, you're going to enjoy your experience at Amelie Arena. And most of the time, the Lightning win, which helps. Oh, They're yeah. a great team. But I feel like the Lightning and craft beer are one of the things that really does mesh well together. And I think, obviously, we'll talk about all the sports, but if I had to say which fan base probably goes best with craft beer, I'd probably say hockey fans. Yeah, that's great, too, because, again, it's indoors, you know, so you're not out in the hot sun trying to choke down a, a 9%, <laughs> you know, brew. So it makes it <laughs> well, a little you bit easier. Be, yeah. but, you know, but uh, I agree with you, you know, and having the world of beer inside there. We talked about that a little bit, too, on the other episode. But um, it's been a fun experience, and Jeff Finnick has done just an incredible job building this and, you know, having one of the better fan bases in all of hockey. And you think of Florida, and you're like, wow, that's so weird. But you look at, I mean, just the, the fan base and how – loyal they are uh with this and and again that success helps definitely being consistent i have such a question for you i'm so, so should ready. i open this first no open it i'm so, so i'm so I feel like excited I need to get ready for so this. listen i've been so there. hold on real quick so okay. we're gonna open up the we're going to beer number two how do you say this demogorgon demogorgon you, you said it right now you're saying it funny demogorgon yeah okay you're good. all right so From this is a smoked thing. cherry porter um and this is brewed uh, obviously especially by four stacks it's a sort of a special release so they just actually posted this if you go to their instagram page they just they just um, posted this, that they opened uh, a brand new shipment of this. It's limited time release, so they only have a limited number of bottles. So got to go and, in and, and get it while you can. I know, you, again, you're not a Stranger Things fan on Netflix, but the font that they use to spell Demi Gorgon is this, that, like, that's famous. That's how the Stranger it's Things. It's a famous font? It is. It's, I'm telling wow. you, dude, it's a thing. That's just, I can't believe I'm drinking famous font beer. So right the, one of the great things about Four Stacks Brewing is it's it's a, they have such a story about community and, and craft beer and how it can come together to really make some ma magical things happen. Four Stacks is something, uh, a brewery that me and Brian have known about for a while. We've had different nights and, and days over there drinking these great beverages that they put together and, and kick out beer wise. Um, they put out about three weeks ago and, and roughly when we started the craft beer playbook, they announced that they were going to have to close. And me and Brian obviously really upset about that, reached out. We're like, how can we help? And uh, we had we didn't hear back originally, you know, but that's fine. I'm sure that they apparently were being flooded with people trying to help, and that's great. <clears throat> and that's such a craft beer thing. And they did their best day in sales at the brewery within these few weeks of when they yeah. were supposed to shut down one of the nights. Also, they've had investors reach out that say we're willing to invest to keep you guys open. So they were able to extend. They're at least going to be open until the end of January now. Their future after that isn't you know in stone yet. We don't know if they'll be able to stay open or not. But the one thing I can say, whether we're talking about Four Stacks or any other brewery in your local area and here in Tampa Bay, you want to keep them open. You want to keep those people employed and those beers kicking out. You know the best way to do it? Go buy beer. Bottoms up, baby. Drink as much as you can. Um, yeah, and, and again, like Zach said, you know this brewery has kind of had a special place in my heart because it was it's the one the closest to my house since you know i've been in apollo beach for the last several years and it's just kind of a nice little homely spot you know it's one it's a the typical brewery not where, everywhere it's going to be cigar city where we did right, our last episode. exactly yeah. it's one of those ones where you feel like it really is a part of the community it's one of those smaller town you know breweries uh, apollo beach obviously not not the same population as tampa but mm -hmm. You know, definitely like Zach said, you know, urge you guys if you're anywhere near the Apollo Beach area, you know, Riverview, whatever, and you can scoot down a little bit and grab some. I don't know 
hundred percent if their second location is still open. I know that they were in the process. I don't of, believe it is. The okay. one that's in Gibsonton. They were opening one in Gibsonton. Um, but the Powell Beach one, like Zach said, they're at least open to the end of this month. So end of January. That's as far as they know at this point. Can we urge people to go get this beer? We don't know. We're about to try it. Let's go. Find out. So this is a smoked cherry porter. Mmm. There's a lot going on. A lot going on. <laughs> okay, so first and foremost, I have to I have to tell you guys something in gals. My favorite type of beer is a Rausch beer. Rausch beer is that's German for smoked. And not a lot of places you make say it with the Rausch beer. Yeah, if it's not German. a lot of places Rausch. <laughs> not a lot of places make them because there's not a lot of market out there for smoky tasting beers. This does not particularly taste smoky, but it's a Good mix of a little smoke, a little cherry. Mm -hmm. um, wow, definitely it's good. That, yeah, like like deep, um, like dark cherry taste. Like it's a little bit sweeter, obviously, than the than the coffee porter. Definitely tastes a little bit of the cherry, but that is smooth. I was going to ask you a question. It's and it's then we stop smooth. to drink. That's okay. I'm okay with uh, that. Raise your hand if you're constantly out having a beer with a friend and you forget things because you're too busy enjoying the beer that's there. Yes. Um, we're talking Stanley Cup very and Lightning. Good. This is very good. Very, very good. I've been really lucky through my job to try and, and do a bunch of different things and be around the Lightning, including when they came back with the Stanley Cup. The one thing I've never done when it comes to hockey, even though I've seen the Stanley Cup a million times, I've never had a chance to drink a beverage out of it. What craft beer, uh, you can be generic, you can, whatever you want to go, what one craft beer, if you had it, they're like, you got the cup for five minutes, we can get you any beer you want, what beer are you drinking mm, out of the Stanley Cup? Wow, what a great question. Right? Okay. It's um, something I've spent nights like up thinking about. Because <laughs> do you go dark? Do you go light? Like, I, what do you do? A lot of, for the record, from what we know, it's a concoction of they're you know, dumping in light Miller beer, lights. They're dumping right. in vodka. Heavies. There's liquor yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, but I'm craft beer wise. Which route would you go? Because I don't think I'd go porter stout. I, okay. I think I would have to go with not necessarily something. Why not? Lighter. Why not? Why not go dark with that? If you're gonna die. Would you be afraid you're gonna like stain it or? Something? I know you're not, but like I don't know. There's dude. been way more worse I things know. done to that Stanley Cup that could have stained it than uh, just having some beer in it, and you know that. I, These guys get wild. I feel that. like I'd have to go IPA because we're we, we've been such big IPA guys yeah. for so long. Mm -hmm. So I know I'd have to go IPA. I <sighs> I think I'd have to go with some kind of hazy IPA too. Yeah, I feel right. Like that's that would fit the mood. Um, now, are you sipping or are you chugging? Oh, I'm chugging all day. You're chugging? Come on. I'm this, taking a nice listen, little sip. I'm just going to slowly. No, there ain't no sipping out I'm of the Stanley Cup. I'm going to enjoy the moment. Nah, come on, man. Look at, I mean, <laughs> you look at what these guys have done with that Stanley Cup. There is no sipping allowed. You are chugging out of that thing. You're you're taking it in swimming pools with you. I mean, these guys do all kinds <laughs> yeah, of stuff. Don't drink the pool water. Uh, that's not a craft beer advice. That's just general advice. By far the best, uh, like, championship celebration to watch out of all the sports i mean what these guys do with the with the stanley cup and where they go and how they party for i mean they go on benders for like two weeks i don't even know how it's even possible yeah for the body i've seen you go on a bender yeah, for two <laughs> weeks it's been a while now that was like back in high school college days <laughs> like spring break these are full-grown men now at this point they're they're obviously peak physical condition but it's it's impressive i sure. don't know from the party stuff, and we're going to pivot here and take a break at some point to talk NFL. From the party side, my favorite story from the Lightning, my favorite two stories, Florida man Pat Maroon, who walked around with a scarf and no shirt for three months in Tampa oh, yeah. Bay afterwards. He fits in perfectly, doesn't so he? So great, dude. I mean, well, that's why he resigned. He's coming back. You mentioned not yeah, a lot of new faces. He loves it here. You know he does. It's in his <laughs> blood, dude. Like, yeah, exactly. He's a big, obviously, one with the St. Louis Blues the year I'm gonna before. I'm going to up a little bit more because I like this for so sure. much. For sure. We're about to take a break. Take as much as you want. Um, the second story is Kucherov. You talk about a bender. I don't think anybody was on as much of a bender as Nikita Kucherov was. Yeah. So they uh, they celebrated quite a bit. And uh, I think, you know, when it comes to craft beer, and we'll ask you, we've had great interaction this week um, from a lot of different people listening and, and reaching out. And we really appreciate that. 
They were um, big fans of the guayabera, you know. So <laughs> we might actually have to buy some guayaberas and wear that. You know, you I should know totally that, buy. A guayabera. I know that was a joke, but at this point, I'm not joking anymore. We need to get some guayaberas. It's been pretty popular. Well, first, we got to get you to watch the episode of Stranger Things, so you, you get the beer <sighs> even more. That's going to be a tougher sell. But to that point, we've had a lot of good interactions and stuff. And uh, this is a good question for this week's episode. If you could drink one craft beer out of the Stanley Cup, what would it be? Don't forget, you can follow us on social media, not only for our giveaways, but to chat and try different beers, suggest different beers. You can also find us easily at thecraftbeerplaybook.com, just like it sounds, but on both Instagram and Facebook at the Craft Beer Playbook, at Twitter, um, or on Twitter at Beer Playbook. And uh, we're going to take a quick break here. We're going to continue to enjoy Four Stacks, our brewery highlight of the day. And although I love talking lightning and we'll talk a lot more hockey throughout the Craft Beer Playbook in this season, the defending Stanley Cup champs, I got to give you credit for something last week. Looking uh, forward to that, yeah. I also have to have <laughs> you, I have to, you have to get a buzz going before you make your picks this weekend so that maybe you'll get one wrong. It's, it might need a little bit more than a buzz. I'm hot right now. I'm, I'm on a roll. <laughs> it's so hot, that Brian Ritchie. <laughs> we'll be right back in the Craft Beer Playbook. All right, back in it, back at it. It's the Craft Beer Playbook Episode 2. We're highlighting Four Stacks Brewery over in Apollo Beach, and we're talking, uh, we talked a little bit about the Lightning as they started their season. NHL hockey is back, but also we're going to pivot now to the NFL Divisional Round, where the Bucks are still alive. We still oh, yeah. got a local team in it as they head to New Orleans uh, in three other games this weekend, and we'll break those down. But I mentioned that I have to give you credit, and I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to ask you to pour some beer to, to, to wash down the credit that I'm fair giving enough, you. Fair enough. Uh, we've had a couple beers. The Demi Gorgon and the chof, Chocolate Coffee. 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 Coffee since I've been going there last few years. So this is a, a pale ale. Okay. Uh, 5.6. Um, okay. Very light color here, traditional pale ale. I dig it. Yeah, and I mean, um, you know, when it comes to this, I'm glad we're taking a slight step back. I want to make sure that we get, because I, I know the Belgian Strong's Belgian coming. Belgian Strong's going to hit so us like, hard. Trying to like, you know, backpedal a little bit on that. But uh, another... I was impressed during the break how you shotgun the rest of that. That was... <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, I usually beat you at shotguns, so. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. Uh, Another uh, lie. We're telling lies now. Although you might beat me at that chugging of the, what was it, the Maduro brown ale that you said that you did? Yeah, we don't bring that story up anymore. Mm. That was a rough day. Warm Maduro, by the way. This is good. This is tasty. Uh, Simple. Very pale. <laughs> very ale. Very hoppy taste, too, too, you know, instead of really? being. Really? Yeah. I, I think take a second sip. You got to wash out the rest of that chocolate coffee porter you just shotgunned yeah that's i didn't shotgun it okay we like you to do this. pronounce it we have to give some kind of I just, reason this is what i love about the craft beer playbook and, and just podcasting in general <laughs> we come up with things we don't know we're going to come up with we now have a weekly thing you want to know what it is quiet bears what is that <laughs> what is a pinfish you don't know what a pinfish is no <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So this one I'm Googling this is it. a little this bit more thing. embarrassing than that. I'm not going to make this one a video clip. Well, probably not. No, no pinfish are they're little fish that have pins on their back. Like ah. they got a spiky back and you, you got to brush them when you go to take them off the yeah, hook. Yeah, go through. You brush their back down and their and their pins lay down and then you can grab the fish. But Interesting. Spiky and there, you try to is this grab more them. is this more bait fish though? Would you catch yeah. fish? Right, you catch pinfish to use to get bigger fish. Yeah, basically. Although that looks like a huge pinfish. I don't know what the hell that is. It literally says the biggest, biggest pinfish pin I've ever. <laughs> Virginia gotta, Beach. We gotta throw that picture up on the on the video. For sure. Give this guy credit. He he looks like enormous. A, I've only ever seen pinfish that are like this big. The guy was holding one like. Uh, that one wasn't as fun as Guayabera. Uh, I like this. Now I know what a pinfish is though. Uh, mm -hmm. This is tasty though. This is good. Mm -hmm. Um, it's steady. You know, look. I, 
again, we talked about the chocolate coffee porter, like how some things are just straightforward. This is a straightforward pale ale. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it does benefit a brewery like Four Stacks or any brewery. Consistency. Mm -hmm. Consistency. Like you don't always have to get crazy. I think you should. And you mentioned this is one of their mainstays. Yeah. This is the type of beer you want I was want in there on. picking up beer. There was a guy rolled in. You could definitely tell he was a regular. You called the bartender by name. You sat down. He ordered a pinfish. I so dig it. it's like... You know, this is the ultimate consistency beer. You know what you're going to get. It's a flagship beer for them and real simple. I dig it. I, I'm all about that. And always remember, tip your bartenders. Uh, and also like this page on social media at the Craft Beer Playbook on both Instagram and Facebook at Beer Playbook on Twitter. And obviously, we have one more beer to get to on Four Stacks. We're going to drink on this pinfish a little bit. Mm -hmm. NFL playoffs. You crushed it last week. That was Thank phenomenal. Um, there was a couple moments when I felt like I was going to get some of my upsets. Yeah. It was close. Definitely. The, I was way off on the Seattle game. Mm -hmm. I was way off on the Steelers game. Yeah. I feel good about my Colts pick, though. That was a good pick. Closer than and we that thought. Was, that was definitely, and I think we both talked about that being, you know, one of those games where the Colts defense was going to kind of hang in there. I don't think either of us thought that the offense had enough firepower to yeah. match up, and that's exactly what happened. You know, I think that we were both really good on a lot of these predictions that we had last week, and, you know, we talked about that Bears, um, the Bears Saints game. We talked about that being close at halftime. They're only down four at halftime. That was right. seven to three at halftime, right? And and then of course they pulled away. So I thought we both had some really good predictions. Did you watch there. it on Nickelodeon? I didn't actually. Oh! I'm a little disappointed that I didn't. But Slime time. I did see some of the video clips. What do you think about that, by the way? I think it's great. If it was only on Nickelodeon, I would be pissed. But because they split it and had <laughs> obviously, <laughs> I think that goes without saying. Because they had it on CBS as well, and you had a separate thing. Here's the thing: everybody I talked to that had a kid, like a child, that they yeah. watched it with, said it was awesome. Said the kid was involved, and that was their audience. Like they're trying to get parents to yeah. watch games with their kids and i you know look shout out to nate burleson who we know on the nfl network does good morning football played in the league for a long time he was the driving force and really and, see i didn't watch it so i'm, I'm, I'm interested in everything that. he did he used an analogy that applied to kids he's like <laughs> he's like oh uh delay a game that's like when your mom yells at you to come inside and you don't go inside <laughs> And it, it, but he crushed it. He was yeah. phenomenal. Uh, it was really, really good. It was really, really fun to watch. The weird thing was when guys got in the end zone, they did the digital slime. So Michael That's Thomas awesome scored. Though, right? And you both posted your video this week. It would have been better if it was slime. real slime. Because yeah. think about yeah. if you're really sliming guys. Yeah. Do you want to score? You're going to get slimed. You'd probably get fined, though. You know, the no fun league, they fine you for <laughs> Well, they'd have to sign off on it. I have been slimed, as right. you mentioned. That was pretty cool. Yeah, it was different. I, You know, I worked in Jacksonville for a few years, covered the Jags. By the way, the Jags just brought in Urban Meyer. I'm sure that'll be a story is for it, us next week. It's not official week. yet. It is. Is it? It's official. It's literally like signed right the dotted line. Yep. Wow. Well, I mean, I didn't watch him sign the papers, but they said it's yeah. official. It is official. It was made about that, by the way? Good, bad, expected. If I'm Urban Meyer, I want that because you have everything at your disposal from a, a new head coaching standpoint, right? Cap space, mm -hmm. draft picks. Um, if I'm Jacksonville, it <clears throat> it's a gamble. You know, that's like asking, do I think I'm going to hit on 21 in blackjack? No, I don't expect it, but I think it's a, a gamble. It's it's a good gamble. I'll put it like that. It's a smart gamble. And we'll talk more Jags and Urban next week for sure. And maybe a little draft too and uh, NFC and AFC divisional Love round. Draft. But let's talk about the games that are happening this weekend as we crush a couple more four stacks mm -hmm. brews and we'll kind of try to fly through these as quick as we can. But I'll lean on you, Brian, since you had the hot hand last week to see if you can keep that up. We'll start with Buffalo and the Ravens where Baltimore not only beat Tennessee, but just punked them by standing on their logo and just dancing around mm -hmm. and all that. And as we talk about this upcoming game, 50-50 chance it's going to be in the snow in Buffalo. Lamar Jackson hasn't played in the snow yet. Buffalo, I believe, is like a field goal favorite. But regardless, do you think the Ravens have a chance to beat the Bills? And are you buying into the Lamar Jackson hype now that he has a playoff win? I think my answer is going to surprise you a little bit. Um, I'm expecting you to pick the Bills. I'm picking the Bills. I'm picking, picking Josh the Allen. Bills. I gave that away, obviously, last week, saying that I think that the, one of the best teams. Out of the four games, I actually think that this game has the least chance of being an upset. Really? Yeah. And so I know think... that the spread does not reflect that. Okay. Their spread, uh, when I looked at it last this morning, was only two and a half. The biggest so... spread is the next game we'll get to in a second, which is Kansas City and the Browns. It's I just, I just have this feeling that there's been so many instances this year of like the Ravens in the regular season just looking like frauds. I know we talked about this at, like a few Frogs? weeks ago. <laughs> Frog protection? Fraud protection. We, we talked about this a few weeks ago in the regular season, and they were like on this string of losing games. You know, they kind of like, they were struggling to put away Dallas for a little bit on that primetime game. And then like, 
it just was odd, you know, and then they lost a couple games that you look at and you're like, they have way more talent. They shouldn't have lost these games. Yeah. I think that that's going to kind of rear its ugly head this week. And I think that being in the snow. Potentially. And again, Buffalo. It'll be week, cold, but we don't know if it'll snow. It's 50-50. Right. Either way, cold weather game. I mean, obviously they're up in, you know, the Ravens are from Baltimore. It's not like they're, you know, a southern, <laughs> southern team that's, you know, has never deal, dealt with it. But Fair. I think that just, I just have this gut feeling that I think that they're going to be exposed this week. And even though that Vegas doesn't agree with me, um, cause it's only two and a half point, which I was shocked by because they're not even getting Buffalo's not even getting the standard three points that usually home team. So gets. you're not only taking Buffalo, you're saying take Buffalo in the points confidently. Confidently. I, I am because I just think that there's going to be, they're going to get exposed. And I do think that Buffalo's defense is good enough to slow down Lamar Jackson, something that Tennessee could not do. Obviously last week he rushed for like 150 yards, which we talked about as far as well, being the one the run he had was like Mike Vick esque. I mean, that was, and that was like 47 <laughs> yards, I think. Yeah. So like. Yeah, that was a good amount of it. You know, it's interesting. Basically, the way that you're saying it is, Philip Rivers is going to have had more success against the Bills in the playoffs than Lamar Jackson will this season, <laughs> right? Because mm-hmm. Rivers had a good game. It's it's weird to look at like that. I'm going to go heavy on the Bills too. I don't think that they struggle to cover the field goal. Um, I agree with you. And, and and look, unfortunately for Lamar, this isn't a game that plays to his strengths. Right. Um, I think they do get exposed as well. So learning my lesson last week, I will agree with you. We're going to move <laughs> so on. I'm going to make you pick first on a few of these. So you can't pick just first on this ride my one. coattails. So the biggest spread of the weekend is the Browns at Kansas City defending mm. Stanley, Stanley Cup. I'm still in lightning mode. Defending Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs uh, with Andy Reid in the mix and Patrick Mahomes doing his thing. And I mean, look, I'm obviously going to pick the Chiefs because I had I had Chiefs. Actually, I had Chiefs Ravens at the beginning of the year, I believe, mm-hmm. playing to go back to the Super Bowl. Um, I'm going to pick the Chiefs here, though. I, I think that 10.5 is a lot. And in any playoff game, you give me 10.5, I'll take the team that's getting the points. Oh, yeah. So I'll take the Browns with the, with the touchdown and the field goal plus. But I do think this game is going to be close. I think this is actually going to be the closest game of the weekend. Wow. Yeah. I think. So you're going against Vegas on this one. I am because I think I think when you talk about what the Browns can do on defense and and given look Pittsburgh has a lot of issues they still have a lot of explosive playmakers and the Browns defense had their way um, now they gave up a lot of points but they were so they're going to give up a lot of points against Kansas City too but if they can create turnovers and they can be you know opportunistic that'll help their offense or maybe put points on the board from the defense so I think the Browns are actually going to give them a hell of a fight yeah. um, but just you have to be drinking a lot more of this to pick against Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> Nicely done. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm taking the, the Chiefs to win outright. Uh, I'm also going to agree. I'm going to take, uh, the, if the spread's around 10, 10 and a half. Um, it's the playoffs. I'm taking the Browns with Come that. I, I could see a score like 34-24. I don't think that the Browns' defense is good enough yet to really slow them down. I do think they're going to be able to control the clock a little bit with the run game, obviously. I think that's supposed to be another maybe snow in, in the mix. I'm not sure, but cold. Yeah. Cold weather game, playoff game. But like you said, you know, when you have a team that can run the ball, cold weather, you don't know exactly what the conditions are going to be. It's hard to imagine them getting blown out, especially because of what they just did to the Steelers coming yeah. off that big of an upset and, and really kind of torching them and that defense. I agree with you. So I, I'm going to pick the same exact thing. I like it. All right. So we'll pivot here. We're going to get to this last beer again, Four Sex Brewery. Bottoms up. This, bottoms is the up. E- this is the easy one to chug. I can do this. I could shotgun this. So we are pivoting to a golden idol which is a Belgian strong. And as Zach may know, um, I'm not a huge fan of Belgian styles. Um, Yeah, I wouldn't say we have the exact same taste buds, but we have a lot of similarities. I don't typically love uh, the Belgian beers as well, Um, whether we're talking, you know, triples, doubles, any of them. Like, I'm just not a big Belgian guy. But, uh, you know, I'll, I'll try any of the beers, and there are some breweries that specialize in only Belgian beers. So I'm excited to try this. Again, we're highlighting Four Stacks Brewery. You're listening to the Craft Beer Playbook. This is episode two, and outside of the brewery that we're highlighting, which is Four Stacks here in Apollo Beach, we're also talking a lot mm. of NFL, and we'll pivot to the NFC. I'm going to save the late game, which is the home game, Bucks Saints, mm. and we're going to talk Best about the last, Rams. Right? Yeah. Oh, that's going to be the fun one. Yeah. Rams Packers, though. Quickly, Brian, are you expecting that game to be uh, anything worth watching? Because obviously the Packers are the one seed. It's at Lambeau. I think the spread's like a touchdown. I think they're a touchdown right now, well, for give or take. See, here's the here's the interesting part. Right now, it's sitting at six and a half. Uh, Rams plus six and a half. Almost a touchdown. I'm going to wait on that game for the public to push that money to seven. Okay. Because I think, I, I do expect, so you I think, like the Rams public with money. The touchdown. I like the Rams plus seven. I think okay. that the defense has shown that they're really good. If you go back and look at the games that the Packers have struggled with this year, which hasn't been many, because obviously they're the highest scoring offense in the league this year, scoring about 30 points a game. Mm-hmm. But here's the classic 
defense versus offense matchup, the Rams are the lowest uh, they points give up allowed. Them. Yeah, right. Yeah, so you yeah. got the number one scoring offense, number one scoring defense. That's going to be a ton of fun. You Typically get, when those clash, it does go to the defense. Exactly. At least keeping it close, right? Yeah. I don't think that the Rams, especially watching them last week, even in that game, I had my doubts that that, that upset was going to you know, kind of come through for me because the offense just was doing nothing. Goff literally looked terrible. I mean, they couldn't move the ball. You can tell that the, the coaching staff at this point, whether it's the thumb or just, just <laughs> Jared Goff, they don't have a lot of trust in him, man. And it was Well, like, not that Russell Wilson on the other side looked great. You know, we, right. we let Russ get cooking. It was baloney uh, for them <laughs> on this past weekend. So interesting. The way that I'm kind of hearing you Should play this, this out. Oh, absolutely. Wait, real quick. The way that I'm hearing it is basically the Rams-Packers game this week for you is your uh, Bills-Colts game from last week. What do you mean? Defense keeping it close. Yeah. Ultimately, it just feels like you're kind of explaining the same thing. Yep. Which I'm not hating on it. I'm just saying that could be a similar type of look. Not as like tangy as a Belgian usually is. I think this. Uh, I think the Smacks fact you that in it's... the front and pulls you in on the back. <laughs> I think that the fact that it's higher ABV, so we're looking at an eight point four on this. Mm. I'm not a huge fan of Belgians, but this one I could definitely do a little snifter of. You know, like well, you're uh, basically going to have a snifter of it right now. I might so have I more than so. a snifter, but no, I think that um, you know it's definitely got that weedy taste. Obviously, a lot of the, the Belgian on the front. I really feel it. like it, it, it doesn't have it as it does much. Kind of smooth out a little bit on the compared back to like a lot of Belgians, and that's the strong ale side of it. I'm mm -hmm. sure is what somebody who is more versed in like right, the specifics of it all is and all. That uh, stuff. We're both picking the Packers, but we think the Rams defense will keep it close. Yep. Fair, fair. All right, so we're, we're we're on the same page. We picked the winners the same in all these games. Well, uh, are we? Hold on, because now uh, we're going to get to the last game, and I feel like we've we've picked all three favorites, right? Yes, and all th all four home teams this weekend are favorites. So we're going with right. the crowd, with the spread. You already know which route I'm going to go on this last game. Bucks, oh. Saints. Oh, oh. Beating a third team is extremely hard. I've seen it done. We all have. It can happen. I'm not going to act like it's impossible. I'll be honest. I think the Saints are the better team easily right now like i don't think there's an argument like look at you're what they've setting done it up you're setting it up can't wait for the the big finish but zaddy's bet against tom brady before the playoffs mm. and he's lost a lot of money Damn. doing it not this year Ooh, not this okay. time this time i make money on tom brady and the Bucks what's the score gonna be to cover three <laughs> to co <laughs> nicely you snuck that in all right so you're picking uh -huh. the saints what what i heard it you can't bury it in a belgian strong I need a Belgian strong prediction from you right now. I predict that it's a great game and Tom Brady is going to have a hell of a night. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of people pissed off at you. <laughs> Here's the thing. The Saints are the better team. And listen, anybody who's picking the Bucs, there's not logic behind why you would pick them over the Saints. I love Tom Brady. I love what he's done for the Bucs. And I think there's a reason to believe that this game will be closer. Don't we have to pick an upset? No. Is it going to be all chalk? I mean, you went Probably. pretty heavy chalk last week. That didn't work out for you. You got to throw no, in No, last week I did the opposite. I went mainly upsets. I picked the Colts. I picked No, that was your Colts. only upset. <laughs> <laughs> and the Colts. <laughs> That's right. I forgot about the Colts. Yeah. Uh, you, you did pick the Colts and the Colts. And my the Colts. heart says the Bucs. I want to see the Bucs win. I, I think, here's the thing. I think Tom Brady and the Bucs can win. I think if you're telling me, though, what's the most likely thing to happen, the most likely thing to happen is the Saints at home with Drew Brees getting amped for that game and winning a third straight game. The fact that the Bucs got smacked as bad as they did in that second game, and the first game was better, but they didn't exactly have a fighter's chance in that game in the fourth quarter either. Are they that much further along here in the playoffs than they were for those two games? Mm, they're further along. I don't know if they're that much. I definitely like the Bucs with the points. Because so you're taking, but it's at three right now, right? So you're yeah. taking the Bucks to cover within a field goal. Yeah. So you're thinking like what, 27, 24, or something uh, like that. I don't have a game prediction. I just hope the Bucks play their best game and everybody's happy. I'm gonna take the Saints. Um, I'm gonna take the Saints to cover the three. I feel like that's a game that could easily be a push though on on that bet taking the three points. I do think it'll be closer. They're not gonna get blown out like last time, but. I just haven't seen enough from the Bucks defense. I mean, that's the, the main reason why they've struggled in some of the games that they have down the stretch. Especially, You're, you mean that the way that they shut down Taylor Heineke didn't like get your blood like going for did this they shut game? Him down? That guy looked great. Well, that's the joke. 
Brian. Yeah, well, that's what I'm they saying. They did it. So the offensive line played great, but that's still offense. Definitely. So. Yeah, I mean, the Tristan Wirfs definitely owned that matchup against Chase Young. That was really, really impressive. That was fun. Uh, no, still actually, offense, he was on Donovan so. Smith, actually, right? So Donovan he, guess, Smith had Chase, yeah. Montez, but Gotta Montez Sweat, credit. Kerrigan. There's a lot of guys. I mean, yep. collectively, now no Alex Kappa, who is there, uh, on the, the left side of things next to Smith. He won't be in this next game. And Ted Larson, who you love, played in that last game and got crushed. Former Dolphin, yeah. Yeah, not good. Not good uh, at all. He's not getting the start. Aaron Stinney is, I believe, 23 year old young gun. He's played two football games in his life in the NFL, so that's going to be scary. But um, So you like the Saints to cover then? Did I hear that? I like the Saints to cover. I'm picking them. I know a lot of Bucks fans are going to be pissed at me. They're going to yell that the I'm Saints a are the better team, Brian. Dolphins fan. But, yeah, they are a better team. They should win. And, again, I, I think this game comes down to defense. Let me ask you a question. How many bets against Tom Brady have you won? When you bet against Tom, how many times have you won that Not bet? many at all. I've lost and, a, way more than I've, than I've won. And, listen, that's not the kind of logic that will make you, you know, pick the Bucks to beat the Saints. But it's enough to make you think about it. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing. We'll think about it. No, and I think it'll be a good game. And it definitely will not be a blowout like it was last time. Yeah. But, you know, I just think the Saints just have a little bit too much on both sides of the ball for the Bucks to be able to handle that. The, the Bucks defense, if they're playing better, if they're coming in a little bit more hot. <sighs> last question you know, for you. Yeah. Does Jameis Winston see the field Sunday night? Absolutely not. All right. We can end on that note. Four Stacks Brewery, thank you for the good beverages. We're going to drink most of them. Most of it. Most, wait, wait. Maybe not all right Let now. Let me ask you a but, question real quick before we end. Yeah. So which game would you say is the most likely to be an upset? Because apparently we're all picking chalk this week. We're, we're going with all four of the favorites. Um, I'd say the Bucks. I'd say, say the, the Bucks, Bucks over okay. the Saints. I'm going to yeah. say the Rams would be my closest. To so we think game. the NFC, there's still some up in the air. We've pretty much locked in Chief, Chiefs Bills. Give yes. or take. Chiefs, right. Bills, and, and we're locking in the, the, the Saints and the Packers, essentially, right? <laughs> That's what we're saying. That's what we're predicting. Sure. Unless you want to change your mind and pick an upset right now. I'll Last chance. Last gasp. Pick, Unless you're going chalk. I'll pick the football team. Uh, all right. Washington's actually out of it, so I can't pick the football mm. team. But we're going to talk more beer, more sports next week. The Craft Beer Playbook, Episode 2. Again, one more time. Shout out Four Stacks Brewery. If you want to help keep them open, you want to show them some love, stop by their location in Apollo Beach. Buy their beer. You have tons of sports between the Lightning and the, the divisional games to watch. Get local. Get as many local beers as you can. Stock your fridge up. You won't be mad about it. You can yeah. never have too much beer. These are all four great beers. I mean, Very and, tasty. And they sell them, again, oh these are 32-ounce cans, so yeah. you've got a lot of beer that you can drink. But this is the reason why I ended up with so much beer, because you know they don't sell little six-packs things. Like, just bottle up what <laughs> you want. Anything that's on draft, they're going to can it for you. And they've got these, obviously, excellent, the Smoke Cherry Porter, so... Yeah, a lot like of choices lot. there. Demogorgon. Uh, remember to follow us at the Craft Beer Playbook on both Instagram and Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter at Beer Playbook, thecraftbeerplaybook.com. We have the website. It's up and running. If you want to check out anything that you might have missed that's moving forward, do that there. The giveaway is out as well. So if you want to check that out, you can find out more information on how to win the Tom Brady Collector's Football, the Total One gift card, the Craft Beer swag bag from local breweries. All that is out there uh, for Zach and for Brian. Hopefully we see you guys next week again. And uh, I'm out of beer. we got some exciting stuff coming up in the future too. So stay tuned. Yeah. Keep engaging on social media. We've got a lot of exciting announcements, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. So uh, we're looking to grow this and we're having fun. Best news, Manny didn't bark since the beginning. We'll see you guys next week. See you, week. Manny. <laughs>